Good afternoon, Wild Campers. It's Pete and L just behind the camera here. And we have a very interesting and brand new hot off the press tent to review for you. This is the Alpkit Polestar. If you want to have a gander just there quickly. This just came out about three days ago. Probably one of the first people to get their hands on it. And it is a very interesting design that you'll be able to see. It also needs two trekking poles that you're probably going to be bringing with you anyway. These have to be put up to 47 inches or 120 centimeters. So let's cut to it. Let's get the tent out of the bag and show you what comes with it. Alrighty, so first things first, you actually do get a little pole that comes with the tent for the foot end. Standard pole that Alpkit uses. This is really small. It is only designed for the foot end of the tent. And just like with every Alpkit tent, you get the standard aluminium Y pegs. So there's about eight of them in total for this. As you can see, they are as standard as a Y peg can come. And you get a repair kit in the bag as well. Awesome. So we're at the foot end of the tent at the moment. The setup for this one is a little bit different. It is an outer pitch first. It's one of Alpkit's only outer pitch tents and it is their only trekking pole tent. So the way you want to do it is you get this standard aluminium pole. On the actual inside of the tent itself, there is a little hole for you to insert this pole into. Now, when I set this up for the first time the other day, I was a little bit scared because I thought this was meant to be sewn onto the actual fly and that wasn't the impulse to be able to insert it. Pretty straightforward, you put it in, you wanna push it all the way through to the other side. Then like with any other outkit tent, you just wanna put the pole into the grommet here. Once you've done that, push the rest of it through. Bit of a push-pull motion. Lovely. Now that you've done the foot end, you want to come up to the head end and grab these two tabs. So this is where the bottom of your trekking pole will go into. Remember, they have to be set at 120 centimeters or 47 inches. Once you've got your trekking pole, you've inserted it into the hole, right? What you need to do is actually put them in a crisscross formation. So at the very bottom, you're actually going to have the little grommet or the hole for where your handle will go into. So you put one in and you want to grab the other. And again, just like before, you want to insert it into the hole. You want to grab the, the handle pocket, shove that in. Now that this is essentially done, I'm just going to loosely stake out the head end of the tent. Now that that's done, what we're going to do is just go down to the foot end, pull it taut, and then just go around and try and fix any loose parts up. Awesome. As you can see, the pitch is actually really quick once you've gotten the hang of it. I think just then it took about, what, two minutes to get it pitched up really quick. And it is an outer pitch first tent, which is awesome. However, that leaves us with the inner of the tent to go in. They do come separate uh, from Outkit directly. Inserting them in on the inner is actually really easy. There's a couple clips, there's a couple of loops. So we're gonna jump to the inside of the tent and get that done. Thank you. 
as you can see, even just on the inside here without the mesh inner, there's actually quite a lot of room. It can't really sit up fully unless you're at the very head here. It is a side entry tent. There's a great, albeit small, vent just up, up here at the head end. So when you buy the tent, uh, you do get the outer and the inner. However, they actually don't come attached. Um, this is designed, if you want to go fast and light, the outer fly only weighs about 480 grams, or the inner here, again, weighs about 450, so it's about 980 grams in total, uh, including the stuff sacks, the pegs, and the pole for the foot end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back in, we're going to attach the inner into the outer, uh, so you can have a much better view of what both the double skins would look like together. Uh, so it took about a minute to get the inner pitched. Now that they're actually together, they pitch together. You don't have to keep undoing them every single time. So probably take you two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes every time to get this fully pitched up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in my regular wide Neoair sleeping pad. So this is 25 inches in width. A lot of people like me want to be able to know what size sleeping pads can you get in here and how big is the vestibule for a rucksack. So I'm going to put them in now. Just off camera here, Ellen and I were just having a chat about how this looks a lot bigger than the Outkit Soloist. And we both think it's down to it being a side entry tent. As you would have seen in my video, uh, link up here if you haven't seen it, it actually was quite difficult to get in and out of the Soloist. Where this one here is actually really simple. All I need to do is just plant my bum on my pad. Whoop. In I get. So this is the 25 inch wide pad. Uh, as you can see, it comes pretty much straight up to the bathtub floor on the inner. Um, there's a, you know, there's about two inches of room on the other side. So this is like an ab workout trying to get my head up. There are two pockets just by my head. So if you've got anything like your sleeping bag or sleeping pad holder, of course, in the back country, you're gonna have some orange tango as well. Uh, as you can see, that sits in there uh, quite nicely. Heavier items will probably drag in and, and may actually hit your face. However, there is enough room on the outside here to be able to store everything from your boots, your cooking essentials. You could also store in your rucksack or anything like that. So now I've got my rucksack in here. This is a 40 litre Atom Packs Atom Plus bag, just in case you were wondering. So now I'm just gonna close this down to see actually how much room there is on the vestibule once the door is shut. Oh God. You having problems? Uh, yeah, it, it's already come loose. Oh. First time using the pull tab to pull it down, it came undone. Naughty, naughty alp kit. Naughty, naughty. Had to get out, it was boiling. It's like 25 degrees today, so that's why we haven't bought a sleeping bag or a quilt with us. Uh, 
like with every Alpkit tent, the quality is as good as what you pay for. So for $139.99, plus an extra $9.99 for the footprint, which I didn't opt for. It's a pretty good, pretty sturdy tent. My initial fear of getting this tent and setting it up the other day was at the foot end and at the head end, they are pretty taut when it comes to the wind. All right, and then down here. Pretty good. However, my initial uh, issue is actually around the side here, as you can see. There is almost no wind uh, protection at all. Apologies, we just had a dog join us. As I was saying, if there's wind actually coming in from the side, there's no additional guy at lines to be able to protect it, basically. So let's just pretend massive wind coming. It goes all the way down to the ground. And as you can see, it actually hasn't bounced back up uh, because there's no guy lines there. So what I'll probably end up doing is just get some Dyneema pats, like stick on patches that have a guy line attachment. You know, maybe two on each side, you know, one, two, and then one, two. So when I am up in the fells or up in the mountains and it is quite windy, I'll be able to guy it out and have it a little bit more sturdier. So there you have it, a setup a little bit of a first impressions of the Outkit Polestar. There are maybe two design flaws in this already when it comes to the setup. Would have been nice to see some, some guy line tie outs on the outside of the tent, maybe on this big panel here or actually on the seam running down here. As I said, I'm going to add some of my own guy out points on here just to help with the wind and the rigidity. And just on the inside of the tent as well with the clippable inner, right? It actually was a little bit flappy in there. Everything was taut, everything was pulled really taut in the attachments in the corner, as well as along the ridge line on the top here. So a very interesting tent from Alpkit. As I said, it's their first trekking pole tent that they have ever come out with. Very, very interesting design. Obviously it needs to be set up either facing the wind from the head end or the foot end, or you know, vice versa, maybe the wind you know, coming from this side. You know, looking forward to being able to take it out and actually test it in the mountains as opposed to in a park on a very nice day with a little bit of wind. But apart from that, check out some of our other Outkit videos. Links are up here. And thank you so much for watching our video today. Like I said, it's Pete, it's Elle behind the camera. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we shall see you next week.